going on ladies and gentlemen boys and girls welcome to another episode of talking the live stream where we talk about nerd stuff that happened this last week joining us all the way from tennessee comic lizard and the jaded geek bienvenido means welcome <laughs> Get late to the party off of there. There we go. Talking shit. All right. So it looks like there's a. I was having trouble with uh, Facebook. What do you mean, trouble with Facebook? Josh is oh, trouble here. Go. Trouble are usually two different things. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Trouble, trouble. Audience public save. There we go. And then cool. There we go. And here we who have we here? Is this an electrifying guy from Whatnot? This is the Whatnot Nightmare. There he is. Woo! Hold on, guys. I got a minute. I got. I'll be right back. My thing messed up. Hold on. Uh oh. And there he goes. <laughs> His thing messed up. <clears throat> His forehead was too so too shiny. I hate messed up things. Mm. <laughs> Watch this. So, geek news. Liz. Yes. How was the hunting this week? The hunting this week. I don't think she did much hunting this week. We tried, but I didn't go out for any big collections this week because I picked up a lot and um, I have to process. Like You're still digesting you know, the last meal? When, yeah, once you get 40, 50, 60 short boxes, <laughs> you need time to process <laughs> that kind of there stuff. There we go. But we went, we went like um, <clears throat> to like some thrift stores and stuff like that, and I found like other things that weren't comics that were fun. Like I know those those little fingerboard skateboard things are like a thing, so I, I found like the tech whatever things of those with this little skate park that you can do. I didn't realize how expensive some of those silly things were, so I found like a big bag of them for like five bucks, and they you know. I'm debating on to sell this whole skate park with all of them. It's one of those situations. Oh, you know what? I did get those Disney Lorcana. So there's that there's that new card game out, Disney Lorcana, that um, Ravensburger put out, and the allocation on that got really bad, really, really, really bad to like a lot of places. My uh, a local um, game store out here got it, so they were gonna get it. I got put on a pre-order list. So I was able to get one of the gift sets, one of their versions of the fat packs, kind of like for Pokemon, you know, the, the box that has like the, the checklist and the box and how to play and all that stuff in it. Um, and then a gift set, it's kind of like the bigger ones that have like the big oversized Pokemon cards and then the foil cards with packs. They have like a version of that. And then I got was able to get a booster box from it. 
And much like Pokemon or Magic the Gathering, there's like a base set of like 204 cards. And then there's like a set that's all foil cards. Deal with it. And then beyond <laughs> that, beyond the set, there's the super like secret like foil cards. You know, there's like eight but or eight or ten or something that go beyond that. And I actually pulled one of those out of one of my packs. Nice. And nice, cool 450 butters. La, 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 Good la. God. Right? And I think, though, right now, it's like this weekend, maybe this week, is probably... When I smack you, you'll know. <laughs> um, when She uh, watched Clue, and now she's, she's just <laughs> all tough, dude. You know what when, I'm saying? She's um, got the candlestick ready. Right. When uh, when everybody starts getting their stuff in, which I think this week everybody's supposed to get, like everybody's supposed to finally get it, that the prices will probably come down on a lot of that stuff. Maybe not on those super secret rares because they're like really like there's like epic legendary or something. I don't remember what they're called, but though the prices will probably come down quite a bit. So. I just got lucky. I pulled it out of one of the packs from the, uh, like, gifts. No, the fat pack, I think. I think it was the first thing I opened. So, it was kind of cool. But, yeah, the prices are fluctuating all over the place. It was one of those things where, like, um, like, well, for instance, the store out here, they ordered, um, like, ten cases. They got one case. There are ten of each of the plays. Oh, that's brutal. They matched. They got like one of like three of the one of like <laughs> one of each of the play mats. They were supposed to get like ten cases of like the gift boxes, and they only got like just six of the gift boxes, not cases, just like six of the boxes. You know what I mean? So it was like super allocated. And the way they allocated <laughs> is that if you normally run tournaments at your store they put you to the head of the list because that means you were going to run a tournament for this and get interest going and and stuff like that. Um, I mean, but interest just... so that they could not sell it? <laughs> well, I, the supposedly, what they're saying is is that they weren't expecting the demand <clears throat> to be as high as it was. And I call bullshit on that because they pre they announced the pre, well, they announced the game a year ago they did a set at last year's D23, like a promo set for it. They did one at Gen Con this year. So they like they they've known like how popular this was gonna be. Because they were the stores were able to put orders in already for it. The problem was is that I think they uh there was a there was a potential that the game might not have been be able to come out for a while because there was a potential lawsuit happening. The guy that created Lorcana had worked for like Upper Deck or somebody and like another company. And this game mechanic was too similar to that game mechanic, even though they, pa it, it was like this, but it went to court and the judge said, you guys are full of shit. Cause so they were able to release it. And um, it's just, it was like a weird, it was like a weird thing. Like how the allocations were going down. Uh, Popping in to say Blue Beetle was okay, not great. The characters was the character was good. The family was overplayed and extra silly. Reminded me of Shazam. The movie borrowed heavily from Spider Man, Iron Man, and a little Watchmen, among other things. Great references to Blue Beetle legacy and such. Also, everything seemed way too easy. As a standalone, it was dot 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 fine. I don't think there's fatigue for me. But they just need to step their game up. Just my two cents. Good night. Okay. <laughs> I like when James does that. He just comes in. He's like, "What? Good night <laughs> and peace out." Oh, oh well, Lord Kana talk. I'm gonna try to find some later, but no rush. Yeah, peace. you know, honestly, I got it just because my that game store called, texted me, and said, "Hey, I have this. Do you want it?" And I was like, yeah, sure. Well, then I was like, but what are you going to price it at? Because a lot of these guys were, I think the MSRP for a, like a booster box is like $145. It's 12 cards per pack, 24 packs per box, I think is what it is. And um, 
a lot of them are like we're selling them for like 250 300 like double the price because the allocations were so crazy <clears throat> but people were still buying it for that price there were people that were paying that and i'm like and when he came back at me how much of that's I, genuine and how much is that that's that shit's that shit's like the the gi joe classifieds were when they came out they're like hey we're gonna give like how many people are interested in this 10 all right we're gonna put two out there make people froth at the bit for them yeah so i would have waited generate some of that price. scarcity i was either gonna wait or i just wasn't gonna deal with it because the art on these cars are fantastic so as it it's it's one another one of those like dual things where you're gonna have disney people that aren't gonna even play the game that want to collect it because of the art and because it's disney and then you're gonna have some people that are gonna play it. I think this is gonna be more of a collection card game, like like collecting the for the art and stuff, than playable, than playing it, honestly. And you're gonna have the people that, like the Disney people that they're fanatics, they're gonna get the base set and they're gonna get the foil set and they're gonna hunt down if, if, if that, if I didn't pull that rare and I didn't know that they were going to do that, I probably would have like full on passed on buying. Cause I, initially I was going to be the collector. I wanted to collect this set. But when I saw that the prices for it, <laughs> for those cards, those secret cards were like that, I'm like, there's no way I'm going to be spending $150 per card. You know, that's like two grand to get just those secret rares. No, nope, I have my limits. The art's great. I just pulled the Maleficent cards out because she's my girl. And I left it at that. <laughs> and I didn't even take the foil ones of them. I just kept the regular, <laughs> like the regular ones for it. But I mean, that's probably like the highlight of what I picked up this week. <laughs> this week. <laughs> I mean, I went to Mu Music City Bricks again and found a, a couple of like Lego sets and some pieces that I needed. But other than that, as far as comic goes, I need to start sorting through and listing what the... <coughs> 60 or 80 boxes that I have here right now. <laughs> Maybe I'll pick some up when we're traveling across country. And then we'll just drop them off at the store. Then we don't have to take them with. They become John's problem. <laughs> 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 I didn't get any of the character decks. Those were the ones, like, he got them in, but, like, I didn't get any, but I asked him, well, hey, if you, if you, if nobody comes in and claims them, I would, I'd love to I go pick them up. Those are kind of like the theme decks that they have for magic where you've got like the specific character on the front and then you got the packs behind it kind of thing. So yeah, I didn't get that one. That I think that was the only like packs that I didn't get was the, the character decks. I got everything else that they had kind of released for it. I'm looking for the Maleficent play mat and other than that, I'm good on Lorcana. But it was just kind of interesting like seeing the prices and well, they were pump. They were pumping it on whatnot. Whatnot sent me like three emails about it, and yeah. I was like, "What the fuck, dude?" I was like, "What is this thing?" And I looked it up, and I'm like, eh, "I'm not gonna. I don't want to fall down that rabbit hole." I was like, "I'm good." Yeah. No, and I probably won't get any more for the store because after this week, like I get like again, it's the hype was it that it was released, and not a lot of places got it, so the pricing on it was like super high. So now I have to. It's one of those things too that just speaking on a like a meta level that the the gaming industry is suffering from a lot of the same kind of things that the the, the general pop culture industry is suffering from, and you have to imagine that in, in the card game sector there have only been a handful of games that have really test of time. Magic: The Gathering being one, Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh being some others, and they've released hundreds of different card games over the last thirty or so years in an attempt to try and ride that wave of, you know, Magic the Gathering to try and capture the kind of uh, attention that that's had. And almost all of them have faded into nothing but obscurity. Uh, and when you combine that with, you know, how poorly Disney is doing overall and pretty much everything else, it's hard for me to imagine a brand new card game taking off like wildfire. It's going to have high collectability in the beginning because... You know, they, they did a slow release or they botched the release or however. And once the dust settles on that, it's going it, it, to, at least from my perspective, it's probably going to disappear from memory. The only, um, <coughs> the only okay. thing, the only thing that might spare it is, again, that collectability factor for the real hardcore Disney fans. 
but I think oh, even yeah. those people are kind of tired of the state of things. And so I don't, I don't know that it's going to well, last. I would agree with that too. I would have, I would have agreed with that, except for the fact that they, <laughs> um, they stuck to the Disney animated classic characters for now, Snow White, Aladdin, um, Lion King, I think Frozen, Lilo and Stitch, uh, Moana, Peter Pan, you know what I mean? They, they kept with those classics and they kept the, um, like Snow White. No, well, they did. Wait, a Snow, no, Snow White's not in this one. Fantasia, there's some Fantasia type cards in it. Mickey, Minnie, Donald, um, those goofy. So you've got them, you've got those guys in there, and they kept the art to be the animation style art, not live action characters, not live action version, a Little Mermaid, but it's it's white Ariel Little Mermaid. <laughs> you know what I mean? But. The animated classics, and I think they were smart in sticking with that because that's gonna draw that's gonna draw more people in, and they've got more potential, I think, to keeping it going. And again, the art on these cards are fantastic, and the way that they did the foil cards aren't like they do it with um, the Pokemon. They did this what's called a cold press, and so it allows the the foil to evenly go on the card. Because, like, when you look at the Pokemon foils, they like to, like, they kind of curve a little bit sometimes. These ones still lay flat, and even with the, even when they're, like, left out. So, it's, they did a really good job. Ravensburger is, like, a good, um, they do great puzzles and board games and stuff, the quality. So, they really put a lot of time and effort into this one, I think. But um, I had zero idea of any of this was happening at all whatsoever. Like, I... It's a Disney kind of like, it's Disney card game. Like right. I've been reading through the, the. I think you've done a really good job of explaining it. I, I, I haven't I, had a I, chance to to get the playability down on it. You know, I've read the cards as I'm like listing the foils and stuff like that and looking through it, but I have to look at the I have to look at the game mechanics for it. But you know, it's like it's like anything. It costs this kind of energy to like cast it these cards do this to help that you know what i mean there's combos that you can do and so it'll be it'll be very interesting to to see um it'll be interesting to see when the next set's going to come out how quickly they're going to release them are they going to release it as quickly as they do magic and pokemon it seems like there's like three or four sets of pokemon a year you know what i mean i mean it took them a year to help to announce between announcing it and release date so maybe it's going to be a Maybe it's going to be a once a year kind of situation. <laughs> I don't know. But, yeah. I mean, if you're not big into Disney and you're not big into collectible card games, this will probably fly totally under the radar for you. Yeah. Yeah, and those, like, <laughs> like James said, those promo cards from um, D23, I think there was like a... I don't remember exactly how they did it, but there's like, what, four four regular like kind of four promo cards that you could get and then there was like a fifth card i think it was like steamboat willie or something but there was like a fifth card or brave little taylor i don't know but there was like a fifth card that they released for it i think that was like the super uber rare if i'm not mistaken like they didn't i think they sold the, what the four in packs or you go each day and you've got a different card or something but like um, and then I think they released promo cards at this year's Gen Con, which was like a couple months ago, where that infamous like theft happened <laughs> where all those card game that that palette of card game cards got jacked or stolen or whatever. Oh, it was what? a six card. Yeah. Car a palette of cards got jacked. <laughs> they just oh, literally yeah, but... walked in and walked out with them. So and a it's palette? on film. It's like they yep. captured it on like camera too. Like you could in the guy was wearing a shirt for his own company. That come to find out <laughs> that the guy that stole the stuff stole it his own shit. He had his own shit stolen because it was supposed to be released. But I guess there was like a there was something going on with with it. Either there was a flaw that they saw, or it wasn't ready to go out, or something was happening <laughs> with it, and they weren't gonna be able to release it. But they made all this announcement for it, and something out so he like tried to get it stolen it's like leaving your car like in like mexico it got stolen you know what i mean it was one of those like situations but they caught him yeah they caught him 
and they caught him because like he was <laughs> there was on camera loading it and he had like the logo for one of his other card releases that he did or something like that it was so dumb you're like really like <laughs> oh my gosh it's so stupid that's it so was awesome so stupid. But yeah, yeah. insurance fraud. Jeez. I think that's what it, what it boiled down to. It was, yeah, it was supposed to be insurance fraud for it. <laughs> You're like, that's awesome. what? That's uh, so whatever. cool. It's I love fun. it. Yeah, well, whatever uh, sympathy he can drum up in the community too. Like, uh, go fund me. They stole my Amazing Fantasy 15 at Comic Con. <sighs> well, Gen Con has been having some problems because a couple of Gen Cons ago, some like guys got some like uh influencer got like beat up pretty bad oh yeah that was jeremy from the quartering he got like you know he's got some medical oh really from, from the beat down yeah. he has some medical issues from it yeah a couple of years back that's kind of what helped uh helped him kind of rise to fame was the fact that he got night <laughs> james he got, got socked in the beard the fuck out. yeah you got you got I think night I, james I think it might have been uh, on uh, on film too that somebody just like laid into him. It was some guy that owned a comic book store in New England somewhere that, you know, you're dealing with uh, political issues, so there was a lot of uh, a lot of that kind of rage in the background of it. And yeah, he kind of Jeremy from the Quartering really got got famous in a wider audience because he always had like a niche audience for like games and uh, some sundry pop culture stuff. But when he got punched in the face, that uh, that helped him a lot. So. And he, he's a solid channel. He's worth watching. Not all, not all gamers are nerds. I used to, I used to, I know who he is. I used to follow the channel. I think that uh, there's a lot of people who are in that lane. And he, to me, he's got. He, the, I like the production quality. I like the topics. I like that he's got his own idea, trying to integrate other things, like the coffee and the chocolate and whatnot. But. He doesn't seem to be able to look at the camera and articulate his thoughts properly. Yeah, because he got beat the fuck up, dude. <laughs> like, he got, he was like, he had to learn how to, like, walk and talk again. Like, he, uh, I don't know it was that bad. He got messed up. You can tell. I know he got, I know his he got hurt. His speech is but pretty bad. I don't know that it was that bad. No, dude. He I was like, he, he was like in a coma. No. Yeah, he was. No, because I've heard him talk, tell the story about what happened to him. And he wasn't in a coma. He was just dazed from getting, like, cold cocked at a bar. His head hit the bar and then the concrete. No, I don't know about that. I don't even think he went did down. Did you even, like, listen to the same, like, story that I did? Cause... Uh, Ethan Van Skyver did a review of it. I understand we, that, but... Like, we like, just like, witnessed, ladies and gentlemen, the first ever couple fight. Um, it's not the first ever. Maybe on film. <laughs> we filmed it. We've caught it on camera, ladies and gents. Twenty something years of marriage. Twenty-five. Twenty something. Twenty-five. Normally, in these situations, it's the guys. Twenty-five. It's twenty-five. Normally, it's the guys that have the problem, not here. No, I just get my math wrong. That's all. Uh huh. <laughs> I, forget, I forget to carry the one. <laughs> that damn you one. To take that left turn at Albuquerque. <laughs> right. <laughs> that damn one. So, anybody besides me catch Blue Beetle this week? I'm sure. Well, I'm sure Howard did. I did. Called the uh, fatigue. No. <laughs> it was okay. What do you, you guys think? What do you think, Havoc? Yeah, it was okay. I mean, it was like a oh. six. Like a six. No, your kids are going to like it. Uh, Nick, your, your kids are going to love it. Yeah, but man, if you didn't even like it, like that's like me saying I didn't like the Superman movie. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I feel, I'm like, what? It's, and I was, it's, I, so, it, it's okay. <laughs> it's not, it's it's just, yeah, for me, it's, it's different because um, I, I already knew all the um, Mexican jokes that they were going to throw in there you know they uh they went hard with the uh whole mexican latino family you know like which usually the culture is like the, it's always together mm-hmm. and uh and i knew ev- i understood every single joke they said like i already knew beforehand what were they going to do with the mexican jokes and i thought george I, before watching the movie i thought george i was like i hope george Lopez is not corny as fuck and, you know 
bad, but he was actually he wasn't bad at all. Um, <clears throat> it was it was basically like a lower version of uh, Iron Man Two. Uh, <laughs> basically, the story. Um, <laughs> and uh, but I didn't. I mean, I didn't. Don't get me wrong. Uh, the main character, what's his name? Solos. I mean, what was what's, uh, Solos? I forgot his actual yeah, solo. name. Solo. He was good. He was really, really good. He was actually good. At, he's a good actor. The uh, CGI was good. It was, it was really actually they put all the money on the CGI. It looked really good. Um, and then um, the, the the part that I really enjoyed was them showing the actual stuff of the original Blue Beetle, which it's my Blue Beetle. That's who I like. I like Ted Cord. That's what I grew up with. And they showed they showed all the his original stuff, um, and if you know Ted Core, Ted Core's always been one of the you know him and Booster Gold. It's the comedy relief, you know. They're like he never took anything serious. He's a smart, he's a genius, rich dude, but he never took anything serious. It's just him want to hang out with his buddy Booster Gold, and um, yeah, that's about it. It's a the 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 portion of where it's Ted Core that was interesting at the end which gave us a lot of things to think about and you know overall it's like I said it's like a 6 6, six, six 6.5 you know I liked it I thought it was the best movie I've seen for, as far as comics goes <clears throat> it's No Way Home which mm, you know like what Spider. since that, that's Spider-Man No Way Home I think no, it's the best one. No, like well, Spider Verse is better. Spider Verse is a hundred times. I, I, I didn't. I mean, I guess, I guess that's a comic movie, but I didn't count it because it's a cartoon. But yeah, oh, that, okay. one, that one was okay. But well, uh, Spider Verse is a hundred times better than everything that's come out um, since uh, since Tony Stark died. <laughs> hmm. But yeah, your kids, your kids are gonna enjoy it though, Nick. They're really gonna like it. Why? Well, I I, I kind of want to see it too, dude. But like, and I wanted, I was supposed to go see it Sunday. You're, but... No, you're gonna like it. I, you, yeah. I, I could, for you, you're gonna you're gonna love it. You're gonna it, think it, it's a twenty out of fucking twenty thousand yeah. out of one. <laughs> and, and don't get me wrong, the, the the theater was was you know pretty packed when we were when you know we were on Thursday. And people were laughing. I mean, there was shit of people were just laughing the whole time. So they were having a good time. It's just that DC has such a bad name now, you know. That yeah, they're in between. They're in between eras. People are not sure this, if this movie counts. This, got, or not. This, this one really, yeah. This one got really hurt by Flash. So uh, now that you know, because we all thought that Flash was supposed to be the one that clean, like, fixed everything and cleaned everything up, which it didn't, which that was very disappointing. Um, now that hurt that hurt the blue that hurt Blue Beetle, even though like I said, it's better than the Flash. It's better than all the other ones that came out. Yeah, it was better than right. the Flash. It was better than Shazam. I liked it better Shazam. than than uh, than the Doctor Strange that we saw most recently. Oh, that's horrible too. That's I liked horrible. it better than Ant Man. How was it, how was it compared to Black Adam? Better than Black uh, Adam. I liked it better than Black Adam also. Better than Black yeah. Adam. Because you guys keep talking about the Latino like joke and family type thing. Are we oh. going to, <laughs> is it uh -oh. is it that heavy that we aren't going to <laughs> No, you no, you'll like it. No, like, you You know what I mean? No, like, you yeah, no, you'll 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 find it funny. I mean, there's a lot of white people laughing there too. Okay. Uh it, it's just it's just your typical. It's, it's just a typical. Ask, you know what I mean? Like. You know, no, 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 no. It, it, what I mean is, it's just your typical. Uh, what is that word I'm trying to say? Like, um, like Mexican stereotypes. Um, stereotype. Yes, it's just the Mexican stereotypes. That they, they put a shitload of them in there, and it it, it was extra cheese. How we say it in Mex in, uh, in uh, Spanish, extra queso. All the movie there was a lot of extra cheese on that. For the, when the family were together, you know. And um, but no, it's just Mexican stereotypes. You'll you'll literally understand. 
you if you see Mexican stereotypes, you'll, you'll, you you'll, you'll, you you grew up part if you grew up part of your life in California, you're gonna get the jokes. Yeah, because, you're gonna you get know, the jokes. Saying, right? <laughs> yeah, that's basically it. Yeah, that's it. That's basically it. That's all it is. It's, it's, and it's just like it's a little portion of it only when it shows up in the beginning. But other than that, it was it was actually good. I mean, the uh, Sarandon. Well, is that her name, Sarandon, the lady? Yeah, Susan Sarandon. She, she was not is bad. In it? Yeah, she wasn't what? bad at all. She wasn't what? bad at all. I gotta give it to her. I mean, for the little like, for the story that she had, she wasn't bad. The one that I did not like, that I could care less. Was uh, I didn't know Ted Core Blue Beetle had a daughter, but also this, uh, here he had a daughter, and that I just did not care about that character at all, like at all. Even though she was hot, but I didn't care about her at all. Wow, that's that, been bad. He had a hot Brazilian daughter. Yeah, yeah. was it Brazilian? She because was it, I don't I don't know if she was Cuban Brazilian or I think Puerto they said Rican. Brazilian. What's something? Ted Core wanted Ted Core wanted the brown uh, the brown stuff. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, um, mm. oh, he's hanging out with Booster Gold. They can go mm. all over the place and do whatever you know what they want in any time zone. And that like, yeah, that's why he was hanging out with Booster Gold the whole time. Shoot, <laughs> man, like his Latina. I, I didn't know that. I didn't know Ted Core had any little Latinas in that favor. You know what I'm saying? Like he was like, look at that Latina. That's funny. Okay, yeah. cool. Thanks, Dan. Oh, yeah. Brazilian, so yeah, so you're right. Uh, she knew, yeah. she knew capoeira. <laughs> no, she, yeah, and, capoeira. No, she was, she was, she was pretty, you know. But I just didn't, did not care about her. But it's a good family movie, though. It's, it is a good family. People, the, the family, you have kids, they'll well, really enjoy this movie. I'm stuck between taking the boys to see that or Strays, so because we both we want to see that both and of what those. Strays, the the one about the dogs that talk with Will Ferrell and shit. So it's, Previews and every oh, movie also. Wow, that, gar- that garbage. Take take a look at Beetle. I'm, 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 Even I'm, James I'm, was like, that movie was like, whatever. It, I I like any movie that that a dog is talking shit and fucking, you know, that's that sounded funny. So I'm. You like I'm you like every. What are you talking about? No, I don't. I don't like every you movie. Like every movie. <laughs> no, I don't. Obviously, I don't you don't like- watch. Are like the party episode. <laughs> he doesn't like everybody. <laughs> no, I did watch. So I got lucky enough to be invited to hang out with my buddy at DreamWorks this week. Oh and wow! I, I spent two days at, at DreamWorks, and I got to help help with a new animated series that's going to be coming to uh, Apple TV. They haven't announced it yet, so I can't say the name of it or anything like that. But a certain horror icon is going to be the villain. And I thought I was going to be able to meet him, but I didn't. And I was very sad, dude. But I got to hear his work, and it sounded awesome. And the hint I'll give you about the horror icon is he Robert has England. Awesome I'm not saying anything, but he has. A Thank you. Our Robert England's steel. coming back. Fuzzy confirmed it. And well, when it, you it is, think about it, I mean, the, Michael Myers the, doesn't talk. Jason doesn't talk. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> he goes, really doesn't talk all that much. He goes, <laughs> Grunty, uh, doesn't <laughs> Grunty doesn't count. <laughs> but I got, I got to run around the studio. Like, dude, this place is so dope. Like I want to grow. When I grow up, I want to work there. Like it is fucking cool, dude. Like you walk, you drive in, and you park right, and then you walk in. On Wednesdays, they have a farmers market because they the, the idea is they don't want you to leave. So anything you need, they'll give it to you. Like legit, give it to you. I'm I'm almost positive if my buddy would have asked for a car, they would have fucking handed him some keys to a car because they don't want you to leave. Like they want you to work. So like when lunchtime came, it was like a factory fucking like the, the bell rang and everyone goes in. And you know when you go to Universal Studios and they got that cafeteria that you go and you like pick up all it was three of those. You name it, like whatever you wanted was right there, dude. Like I was like, no way. <laughs> I ate like a king, dude. I was like, oh, it was awesome. But like the I got to help out with, with two of the episodes. And it was pretty dope. Like the show is gonna be really cool. 
Like I, I was, I even said, I was like, well, I would watch this. Like, I know my kids will like this, but I was like, I would like, I would watch this show. Like, yeah, it looks cool. like we're going to have to get Apple TV. <laughs> and, and, and as comic lovers, there's, there's tons of, that's part of the reason why they brought me in was because it was, it has something to do with that too. So it was, it was awesome. Like I was very stoked dude. So I got to do that. And then like, I was, all, I was all proud, like having a good time, dude, and they came home. And I was like, I, I need to watch something like violent, dude. So we watched uh, the new, ex that Extraction 2, the the Netflix one. Oh. <laughs> that was awesome, dude. That was worth it. <laughs> yeah, that, that, was, that was awesome. I was like, dude, the, the whole opening, I was just like, yes, dude, I saw my feet like fucking like this. And the part that killed me was fucking my son standing up. And he's like, I don't like that little kid. I don't like that boy. That boy's gonna get him killed. I don't want. He's like pacing back and forth in the house. And I can't shit. watch those movies at night because I couldn't. I can't. I do the same thing. I get so tense. Like I start, like not these cats because these cats will not me, but my other cat that passed away. I'd grab him. I'd be like, he have like a bald spot on him because like, <laughs> I mean, Betty, I can't do that. Like, I mean, it's one of those movies I have to watch it at like 10 a.m. because. So that I'd have all that time to like <laughs> mellow out so I could sleep. Like it would Yeah, that first one that that made me nervous. <laughs> like, I was eesh, it's crazy. Crazy. I still I still wanna see Talk to Me. That's the one I'm I'm really wanting to see right now. The one and, with the hand thing? Yeah. Like I really wanna watch that. That they they've done they've done a good job of promoting that movie to where <laughs> it's made me wanna watch I was like, I need to see that movie. That looks good. And then I was thinking Which, of you. I've seen like one, two promos for it though, man. They, talk to they, me. The they, one about the hand. promo had a different lane to where I feel like between the promos, you see the whole fucking movie. No, you, there's something. Did you see both promos? There's two yeah. different. No, I've like, seen One of them is just the girl. The other one all of a sudden is all her friends are involved. Right. Like a, like a game. But then like I think there's something else that goes on with it. And that's what I want to watch. Like, I need to find out what that is. But I was uh, out of nowhere. My birth mom texted me and she fucking was like, have you seen this? What was the, the one you guys were telling me to watch? The the one with the guys in the uh, death row? The fairies. The fairies. She, she literally, out of the blue, <laughs> texted me to tell me I need to watch the fairies. She's like, you need to watch this movie, man. And I was like, oh, shit. Okay. I was like, I, I was, <laughs> it's on my list. I already have everyone telling me to watch it. So I'm going to watch it. I'm like, don't worry. So I'm I'm excited to see that. I was gonna watch it last week, but I got called in to do the the work, so I didn't get to do shit last week. What was your work? Are you like, it, okay? it it was it it just had to do with more of of uh, dialogue, a lot of dialogue and you, certain you're, you're things. He was a fluffer. It, it wasn't even a porn <laughs> video, but it was just a fluffer. <laughs> pretty, pretty pretty much, dude. Fluffer. Like. They, <laughs> my, 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 my buddy does a lot of the lighting for the shows like he'll do the digital lighting and like get setting the mood and so when we went in there but i was dying laughing the whole time they were i was there the guy kept looking at my mouth like he was like literally like like i know how a woman feels like when the guy stares at their tits because i was dying laughing because he's just staring at my mouth and I, the whole time i'm like <laughs> I'm like just trying to. I was like, "What the fuck's on my face, dude? Like, what's happening?" <laughs> and then the guy finally told me, "He's like, <laughs> he's like, he goes, uh, he goes, uh, your 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 voice is really good. You should record it." And he gave me like this thing to send it to, and I was just laughing. I go, "Nah, I go, I don't, I don't think I have. Like, I, I have one voice. That's my voice. Like, I can't do fucking voices. Shit." You know, we, we all know he said you got a pretty mouth, son. That's, that's what I kept thinking. I literally kept thinking that. I'm like, this guy's going to corner me in the corner and try to fuck my mouth, dude. I swear to God. <laughs> I was like, damn it. It's rough. That's yeah. super rough. <laughs> that's, a, that's why I don't, I, from that day on, I stopped staring at boobies a long no, time. No, you're not. The first thing you said out of your mouth when we watched Clue was... That oh, that's, that's they <laughs> that's because that's because they meant for me to watch it. They meant for me. That was that was uh -huh. meant for okay. me to look at. You see, okay. when they're covered, I gotta like do it. But this was out and about, like you know, they were like ready to <laughs> pop out. They were gonna go like that and shit. But whatever, whatever gets you through the day, fuzzy. <laughs> 
So you got any shows coming up for us? No, I like to like working on or something. Yeah. No, like conventions. I thought you and I thought you and Nando were like on a roll. No, like... we were gonna go. We're gonna, they want me to do. They wanted me to go to Vegas this weekend. I can't do this weekend in Vegas. They want me to go to the Long Beach, but I don't think Long Beach is gonna be a great show. So, mm-hmm. and they want to. They want to do. Massive. Yeah, they they were they were saying that it, there was going to be like seven guys again in two booths. So I was like, no, I'm good, dude. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm good. I, I'll come and help. I told them I'd come help, like hang out, and you know. But nah, no, nothing, nothing, nothing coming up soon. I I just sold a shit ton of fuck a lot of like six hundred bucks to a guy, and he's so I I did okay there and been doing whatnot and just trying to try something different my wife and everyone says i need to show my ugly mug more on camera so i'm gonna they're, that's why they're i want to they're wrong i i agree with you havoc but fucking that you know what it's well you know what hold on, hold, on, so hold, on. Slow. hold on let me see that let me see that pretty mouth though hold on let me see <laughs> uh, yeah okay no wonder that guy was all up on you no wonder <clears throat> gene gene simmons ain't got shit on me <laughs> Yeah, because there's no conventions uh, till, shoot, the next one is, uh, what, LA Comic Con, right? There's nothing else. Yeah. Well, because I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't put Long Beach hey, as the convention anymore. And uh, Honky Tonk's going to be there. Honky sent, Honky and Greg sent me a picture this weekend with their middle fingers like that. He looked at sending me and they were like, uh, I guess Honky's like, I got a booth at, um, at, uh, at LA Comic Con. And I was like, "Oh shit!" And he's like, "So come well, there's in." A lot of, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of artists, <laughs> and I'm sorry, I mean actors, <laughs> actors and actresses <laughs> gonna be at LA Comic Con. Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Um, Hacksaw Jim Duggan's gonna be out here with us. Dude, Ooh. he's awesome. Dude, he's such nice. a good guy. Dude, get get the two by four signed by him, okay? Because I was dumb and I didn't get it last time. I should have got it. It's literally like a piece this big, a two by four. He signs it and looks at you and goes, "Oh." It was awesome, dude. That's where awesome. CJ gets it from. <laughs> that just now dawned on me. That's where CJ gets that from. <laughs> my, All right, my well, brother, my brother loves I can't that remember if buddy. it's, I don't know if it's September or if it's October. I think it's October. I'm hoping. If it's October, I'll, I'll try to get you assigned, uh, you assigned rock, two by dude. four. I'm telling you, I, that was because he was literally three three booths away from us, and all I kept hearing over and over is, "Oh, that was awesome!" Dude. I was like, "I love this place, man." Day of the Dead. Dio yeah, I think that's, an, that's an Ontario. I think that's an Ontario con. Like it's an Ontario convention. Mm. But I'm not really. I'm not being re- that. I'm sorry. Anybody Anyone special bet. supposed to be in that? I don't know. I, uh, James Lewis would know that. Uh, he's more into that uh, those type of conventions. But usually, there's there usually there's always a bunch of guests. Is that the one that with Sam part. Raimi? There's one with Sam Raimi might, coming. It, up. Might, it, might, it might be. Yeah, it might be that one. Because that one I want to go. If it, I want to do that one, because I want I want my Evil Dead shit signed. Uh, James Lewis would know. I I don't know. Uh, he's He's an expert on those cons, but other than that, there's no there's no other cons except for LA Comic. Well, we're me and uh, me Iggy and uh, Isaac are going to New York in October. Yeah, we know your guys are cool. Okay, you're the world travelers. Okay, we understand. Yeah, you know, that's what like. What weekend is that? Uh, shit. Yeah, I think it's the eighth. I have shit to do on shit weekend. From that, I think it's the eighth or the eleventh or something like that. One of those. Uh, so we'll be we'll be back in town, but weeks too. Son of monster, to get yeah. to drive up there. Well, then who's there, James? That makes me want to go there because you know I love horror. So who's there? I love horrors. And then you want to hear some fucked up shit? My kid started, my oldest kid who's been scared of horror movies, been watching horror movies by himself. And then, and then he, I walk in the room, he's watching Jeepers Creepers, one of my favorites. I was oh. like, what the fucker? I looked oh, at him, I go, what? I, I love that one. And I go, why are you watching that? And he goes, 
well, I just wanted to watch it. I'm like, okay, but I would have watched it with you. Like, I want to watch that movie. Like, what the he's hell? Like, man, I don't, I don't want to watch it with you, old man. <laughs> he, he said, well, I watched part two first. I was like, you, you screwed it all up, man. You got to watch one, then two. He's like, well, can we watch the other ones? I was like, no, the other ones suck. I'm not, you can watch them. I'm good. I ain't watching those other ones anymore. <laughs> those are bad. Sorry, monkey. <laughs> Jeepers Creepers was legit. Yeah, was yeah I know. We 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 watched it, and I was like, I laughed the whole time when I was watching. I was like, this is a good low budget movie. Like, this is no budget. You know what I mean? We got three cars. I got some friends that have these like dirt houses that we can borrow. You know what I mean? <laughs> We're gonna do it in the middle of the country and shit. Well, they Smart. reenacted the opening of that unsolved mysteries episode like verbatim. <laughs> well, well, that's what I was trying to explain to my kid was like, because, you know, right now he's he's in advanced film. And so they're they're working on their script. Right. And I was explaining to him, I go, you know, sometimes it's great to get things from uh, reality and start there and then just go somewhere else. You know what I mean? Like go to the left somewhere. And then that way people kind of feel like it could be true. You know, like it's got that <laughs> feeling of it because they're like, I swear I heard something about this before. And, you know, that kind of thing. You should tell Fuzzy he should do a movie based off of that. Um, Ooh, aliens! That crying monster thing or whatever. Crying monster. Remember the one that like they pick for their um, yeah your podcast pick for their mascot. Oh the, the what was it called the squonk? The squonk. <laughs> you should look up the squonk. Look it's one of these squonk. cryptids. It's like it's like a cryptid that just this it's so it's sad, so sad. because I'm, it's so ugly that when it gets depressed it just dissolves <laughs> in nothingness. When it sees a reflection of itself, that's why it doesn't hang by the river. When it seems like it sees a reflection of itself, it gets so sad it dissolves. That's not a movie. <laughs> and, well, I'm sure you could do something with it because it's like a it's like it reminds me of that ugly pig creature thing from um <clears throat> Galaxy Quest. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't know what it looks like Greg Knack or whatever the hell it was. Like, I'm like, yeah. I'm, I'm, I had, I got an, I got an idea that was like a couple, <clears throat> like a month ago that I've been toying with and drag, dragging out longer and longer. So I, I've got some, I found something, one of the, the crazy little monster oh, stories, but. The squonk. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Saint he looks Tess pretty naked. pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like 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 uh, there was a transporter accident from Star Trek, and the dog turned inside out. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's the yeah, it's Gregnak from Galaxy Quest. <laughs> I wonder if that's where they got that idea from. <laughs> hey, dude. Yeah, but like when crazy. it gets cornered, it gets scared, and then it starts to cry, and then it dissolves into its own like <laughs> the squonk. I'm sure Squawk. you can fuzzify it. <laughs> make it your own make, fuzzy. Make make it a superhero movie, <laughs> the Squonk. The Squonk. Oh, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get under the table or get under the door. Scare me! What scare me? <laughs> no, like we the the stuff that that I've been reading oh, about, and like learning and Dream even warriors. <gasps> Ooh, I would. I want to see them. If, hey, if the Dream Masters, if the girl from Dream Masters is gonna be, oh, I already banged her, so don't worry, I'm good. Isn't I she got, fucked like, up now? She's like in a wheelchair and shit. Really? Yeah, she can't walk. And that's what I heard. Who? Jenna hmm? Jameson. Wait, Jenna oh, Jameson shit. can't walk? That's what I heard. Is it, what, what happened to her? Like Christopher Reeve or something? I don't know if she fall off a horse, but uh, you know, I, honestly, I didn't really look a at horse it. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like you 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 see news sites and you click well, on it, be, like uh, I gotta go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> like, you see, like uh, Tito Jackson gets hit by a car. You click on that, and then the little side stories they have side things that are like articles they try to get you to click on. And one of them was uh, Jameson, Jenna Jameson's paralyzed. So it's it's possible that that was just some kind of a thing to try to get me to go down a, a clickbait, clickbait rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah. But let's see. 
That's we're crazy. Gonna, we're gonna go down that hole together. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Good night. <laughs> okay. On that note, I'm out. Love, peace, and chicken grease. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't getting better than that, ladies and gentlemen. I'm out. <laughs> My goodness. My goodness. Yeah, then the cast of. Oh yeah, you were saying that last time, dude. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I guarantee I, that'd be awesome, dude. There's all these little like small like little conventions in some of the areas that are around us, you know, like they were in the old days. But they get some celebrities that come in and stuff, oh. and then. Um, Oh, and then we have that Brick Universe one. The Lego, there's this huge Lego convention thing that's coming into town. Next, two weekends. Two weeks from, yeah. And, um. So she can lift her legs, but she's not, but she's can't Mystery walk. illness. Was it the Vax? Was it STD? Was it both? <laughs> <laughs> two great she got tastes a new go great STD. together. Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new type of STD. But that 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 looks like that could be fun here too. Is that that Lego, that brick brick first brick universe? Yeah. They've got like some celebrity, like you know, Lego celebrities that are going to be here for that. And that's in a couple of weeks. It gets so Did busy you... that you have to go. That you have to like schedule like your time. Like you can only go for like half the day. Because there's so many people that come in for it, it's crazy. Did you guys hear about the what what not announced today about the uh, gambler quote unquote gambling? Well, I mean, we got an email for it, but I yeah. didn't look at it. It, it was saying so now, um, like before, like with the poke, it, it, I think it mainly affects the Pokemon people, our card yeah. card guys. But so like we can't do like if you do a mystery box, you can't have a prize like you can't be working towards a prize. You know what I'm saying? So like you can't ha find the golden ticket to get the fucking comic and shit. Yeah. Or you can't like if you pull a, a rare card out, the guy can't buy it from you or trade it or you know what I mean? Like it's crazy. They're, ki they're killing themselves more and more like it's yeah. just crazy. Well, but <laughs> Part of that has to do with gambling laws with different states. When you're doing stuff that's like on the internet, there's like certain like laws that you have to like follow. It's so weird. Like you can't you can't have this, you can't do that, and it's because it's considered gambling. And if it's some states don't allow it, yeah. it's like a weird like yeah. This is the second or third time that they've had to adjust for that. Because they did that, I don't know, like a year or two ago, where you couldn't do the you couldn't do the duck races anymore, because the duck, like you couldn't do a buy-in for a duck race because it was considered mm -hmm. gambling, you, or you couldn't do like the wheels and stuff like that because it was unless you definitely were getting the prize for it. You know what I mean? Like it was because it's considered gambling. Like you're buying yeah. into a pot and you potentially could not win. Like you couldn't. I know with some of the sports card pack guys, like. You had to, like, it was, like, if you bought so many squares, you know what I mean? It's, like, certain things like that, and they, it sounds like they're changing it. And then they did another one it specifically had to do with, like, mystery packs. Like, you have to say exactly what the value that's going to be in it, and that value has to be that. And you can't, um, yeah, and you have to be upfront about it. You And you have to, like, for those other ones, for, like, the card ones... You had to like physically open it on screen, like every single pack. Like if people said no, just ship it to me, they weren't allowing you to do that. Like you had to open each pack. Like when they said which one to open, you had to open it online so that people could see. You couldn't do it off camera because then people are like, well, they're switching shit out on us. You know what I mean? This isn't the pack. Like you had to do it all like right there. Like you had to see it get cut open. You had to see the cards come out. You had to, you know what I mean? Like a con like like a dealer. At a, on a table type thing so they've they've had to change it over and over again because there's too many shady fuckers that are out there that are that are trying to do different things and plus you got people that are just complainers they're like oh, i didn't get what i wanted they must have switched it out you know that kind of shit 
So stupid. So dumb. Yep. But it doesn't surprise me that they had to adjust again. So either some form of government came in and told them about this this quantify qualifies as some form of gambling or somebody complained somewhere about it or you know what I mean? They'll so. just pivot to another random thing. Yeah. Or they won't allow for they won't allow for that that to happen. They're gonna be like, no, nope, you could uh, just have to sell the packs. You can't you can't do like Mr. or you can't do like uh buy ins you can't do like rando whatever. Do you know what I mean? Like here's the pack that you're bidding bidding on. This is the pack that you're getting. You have to open it up on the because and that was the other thing is that some people were like rip it or ship it. That was mm -hmm. like another big thing. You can't rip and ship anymore. You're not supposed to because again, people who are buying the packs want them to be opened on screen so that they know if the hit got pulled out of that box yet or not. Because as soon as that hit gets pulled out of that box, all of a sudden those packs drop from $30, $40 a pack to five. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Because they know, well, I'm not going to get that pack anymore. It was a lot of times what you'll see is once that hit comes out of the box, the the seller will put that box to the side and he'll just open up a fresh box on the screen. So it'll keep it going. It's, it's kind of, yeah. yeah. And then they put the, the, the tainted box to the side and they'll sell those packs in the store. Yeah. Yeah. Or they'll do they'll do something else, or they'll just crack them open and sell the single somewhere, or do the single someplace, or yeah. It's kind of crazy that you can just print money like that. I get, I missed when you said that they did a, a Lorcana one. It, it popped up on my screen and I missed it. I didn't click it quick enough because if you don't click it right away, like it's with you, Fuzzy. Like I get the note. I have it for notifications for when you go on. That's why I'm on when you I see it. If I see it, I click on it because if I don't click on it right away and I go into whatnot, I you're not there. Like you're not one of my favorites up at the top, even though you should right. be. And I have to go in and I have to type in your name. I have to like search it because you don't even show up on the front page and anywhere. You have to type page. you and you know how you, you start mm -hmm. typing and you yeah. should think if you put F U Z, then you it should start going. Up. It goes all the way to Fuzzy and the fat M A. Yeah, it goes. It, yeah. <laughs> you gotta type almost the whole you thing. You gotta type in almost the whole thing before it'll like pop up on the screen. If I can. No, I know. God dang it. That's that's why that's why I lose a lot. I know I know that is, but that's why I call he's, myself. He, 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 not he's nightmare. too controversial. He's too that's controversial. Right. That's he's right. The, I'm like he's a, the ECW the wrestling of pops and comics. <laughs> You're way more entertaining than any of those other fuckers that they like promote on that stupid place. Like, well, that's, that's, dumb. that's part of the reason why I was listening to my wife and a couple people tell me that I need to show my face more. They were like, you know, it's better to, if you have a face to go with it, it's it's easier for people to recognize. But I'm like, can, can I same... pay for you not to be putting your face on the other screen? <laughs> well, hey, I don't want to do it either. I like my anonymity. You know what I mean? Like, I, I know, I know, you know, we were talking about that today when we were, when I was at DreamWorks because the guy, one of the guys kept calling me fuzzy and my buddy was calling me Nick and the guy, the head guy goes, what's your name? I go, my name is Nick, but you know, everyone calls me fuzzy. And I told him, I go, I like it. if someone yells fuzzy at me at a con, usually they know me from like whatnot or something like that. But if someone says Nick, they know me personally a lot of the time, you know? So that's what I've always done. I mean, even when you guys first met me, I had a mullet, I had a totally different look, you know what I mean? You and then scared me. as, soon, <laughs> as soon as we were done with the show, I fucking took it off like Superman. And I was back to, you know, being Nick and I shit know you like, like that. walked by me with your mullet and your hat on and you went out to the car for something and you walked back with your, like your, your hat. With no mullet on and i went and you talked and that was a thing is like if you wouldn't have said anything i would have thought you were a completely different person but i heard <laughs> you talking and i looked at and i looked at josh and go it, what do he have long hair right <laughs> josh was like i think so, <laughs> yeah, I think so. My friend was something like oh shit, it's a gimmick <laughs> 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 yeah, and it was and like that's the way i looked at it but 
I, did, I gave up that gimmick because it was a pain in the ass to always try to have the hat on, you know what I mean? Like everywhere I went, like it was a pain in the ass. So I was like, fuck it, I'll just, you know, I'll, I'll go as me. But I, I I think that's part of the reason why, like, I'm not on camera. And so since I'm not on camera, you know, I mean, I could, I could stuff these, make them a little sexier and get some more fucking, you know, views that way and shit. Let, let, the, let all the hamburger meat out with some fake boobs and shit. The top. Get both sides of the spectrum on that bad boy. Here, uh. <laughs> <laughs> just the Vogue square. Do that. <laughs> That's right. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> oh man, what's Creo? What is Creo right down here? Is there a way to find out if people that are having superhero fatigue were fans to begin with? My bet is people that weren't nerds aren't getting their half-naked super bots and are tired. <laughs> I actually think it's the other way around. Uh, I think that um, that the, the people that are the normies, I think they tolerate far more than the fans do. I think the fans are looking for something specific. The normies will put up with all kinds of craziness because they don't they don't understand where the deviations are. So I think that's um, thank you, Nando. I think that's the the distinction between the two. Um, and I don't know, I suppose superhero fatigue is potentially a thing, but I honestly think it's worse than that. For me, it's superhero disgust. Um, it's, it's not, it's not that I'm tired. Of I, I would watch, I would watch another dozen Captain America films if they were good, like Winter Soldier and Civil War. The problem is, is that they're, they've destroyed the franchise. So I'm so disgusted by it that I'm not interested in watching any of it. Are you it's, telling me they have to do better? <laughs> do better is an understatement. It's an, it really is an understatement. That was a, that was a deep one there. <laughs> that cut him good. <laughs> I think, I think uh, a lot of fans out there are just sickened by what's going on. And there's the interest has disappeared. It's kind of like, kind of like what happened when I quit kept, uh, collecting Captain America back in the early 2000s when they did the Cap Wolf storyline. I was so disgusted by the stupidity of it. I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing this shit anymore. What was the deal with that storyline? He's been jaded for way too they, long. They, <laughs> they basically had Steve Rogers contract lycanthropy, so he became a werewolf. And then he goes out and he... Uh, Are you he serious? Gathers, <laughs> yeah. And he, so he gathers to himself all of the animalistic superheroes out there. So like Wolverine. Werewolf by uh, Night. Werewolf by Night. Uh, was Feral from X-Men. <laughs> Uh, like all of these, like, like wolf. <laughs> well, I like that and word wolf cat. And, and they were, and they were all like, they were all together I, fighting as. Like, I got the pop. Like, this is this is the dumbest shit I've ever read. <laughs> and I was just like, nope, we're done. It's over. And I stopped collecting at that point, and I haven't picked it. I really haven't collected any comics since then. <laughs> and I actually, really ha I actually have that pop in at work. The yeah. Captain America wolf pop. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> I want it just to bring it home to put on the shelf to annoy him. Like I have I have a variant cover that they did. They did like all the Captain America outfits and all of his designs throughout the year. It was like for an anniversary issue. I I specifically bought the Cap Wolf one. I have it in my office. I'm like debating do I sell it? Do I keep it? do what and I think it popped up in my Facebook memory it's like so many years ago and I I think I took the picture of it and I went I bought this just to piss off my husband <laughs> I was like the <laughs> for it <laughs> it's a good cover <laughs> no, it's, it's awful what, what disturbs me is how many people think it's a classic now uh it was dumb then it's dumb now you don't understand the no, 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 no. lycanthropy. Of, of all the people <laughs> assembled in this little entourage here, I I'm agree. the Captain America fan. I'm the Captain America fan. And therefore, as gatekeeper of Captain America, I declare it <laughs> He has spoken. <laughs> I was tripping on the premise. Fucking werewolf Captain America. Who the fuck wrote that? Uh, he I, was I don't even remember. Was James so Jameson's kid there too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was there too because yeah. he's not werewolf by night. 
No. And in fact, if memory serves, and I, might, I might have this wrong, but I think it was... Is that werewolf by night's name Jack Russell? I have no <laughs> I love it. It is <laughs> Jack Russell is his name. Oh my god. That may, god. Now I want to read it. I never read that one. Now I want to read it. His name is Jack Russell. That's dope, dude. He's a dog named Jack Russell. I fucking love it. I think that's <laughs> who they have in the um in that the the special that they did, that Halloween special with Man Thing and the Bloodstone one, you know, that we watched. Fuzzy, I think let's that's see Jack Man Russell. <laughs> you wanna see my man thing? Alright, hold on. We don't want to get my to <laughs> no, the, uh, Cap didn't become a football player. Uh, he, there was a time when the Super Soldier Serum was failing for him, so he had to wear kind of like an Iron Man style suit in order to keep him going. Oh, that's right. And, and oh, it yeah, looked, I think it was like uh, issue 350. Was it, was. It, it looked kind of like a football outfit, but it wasn't really a football outfit. But it was that was also a miserable storyline. It's like that was after Cap Wolf. It's like you got this, I was you got I was this. Bu- I was buying those books right there. Yeah, I, I'm sure you were. Liefeld was probably doing the art again for it. Probably. <laughs> it, but it's like you have this character with all this history. He's pretty much dodged like 60 trillion rounds of ammunition fired at him. He's led Earth's mightiest heroes for decades on end, and you can't come up with a story to tell for him. Really? I. I it seems like a. That seems like a Ryan Johnson movie. You know what I mean? <laughs> you have this epic character that's put into your hands, and you can't figure out what to do with him. I no. think that's a problem unilaterally for a lot of the for a lot of these properties. I, I don't I don't I don't see why they couldn't like just time hop with with this like you know uh, have Wolverine run around with fucking Maverick in the nineties, like or Wolverine and Captain America back in the forties. Yeah, 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 just have just insert shit and then just try to make sure that it doesn't uh you can insert football dog boy some shit into you. The... <laughs> you can you can ins- ins- insert you know like your history like let's say you want to have a story about uh Wolverine and Captain America doing some kind of thing right now you have like a one shot from the past that can retcon the shit that you're gonna like. Oh, remember when we learned to fly the B fifty two? Yeah, this is a similar thing. And then it can, in the little corner, see issue number two, Wolverine special Captain America time travel thing. There, there's so much, there's so much opportunity there, but right, it's, it, there's a lot of potential. But it, the, I think they don't give. I think what you're seeing with a lot of the creative <laughs> talent out there today. Uh, in with the big companies, you know, with these large franchises, is that they don't know the original material and they don't care. What they want to do is tell whatever story that they want with no consequences. But, and yeah, Creed, Creed was right. You can Mad Lib better ideas than that. That's right. That's I probably I was a Mad Lib. I literally think that you could hand Star Wars off to most like fifteen and sixteen year old kids that like love the original movies, and I would even grant. The, uh, the the prequels that you could hand Star Wars off to them and they could do better than what Disney's done because it's because what Disney has done is so abominable and Marvel is is hot on the heels of that uh, on Lucasfilm trying to make the MCU into the most irrelevant piece of shit ever. Um, we well, you'll know when they hit Pinnacle when they bring Cat back as Cat Wolf. Oh, brother! Oh my God. <laughs> that would be Don't give them ideas, please. I think, I, think, <laughs> I think I think also you gotta you gotta look at it as like okay those first two phases Marvel had to prove something like you know you know like uh, Havoc might know what I'm talking about but there's these, these wrestlers named Young Buck the Young Bucks and they did this interview. And they were talking to these new wrestlers that were coming into the thing. And they were like, oh, man, we want to be just like you, you know, like the Young Bucks. And he was like, man, we wish we were just like you. And he's like, because once you conquered the mountain, you know what I mean? It's not like you hear the saying, it's hard to stay on top, but it's hard to have that drive once you've reached your pinnacle. You know, like you're like, okay, I'm at the top now. Like, what are you going to do? 
And those Marvel movies, they had something to prove. You know what I mean? And you could see it in those movies. You know what I mean? Like, they're like, you think this is going to be some shitty fucking, like, cartoon movie? No, this is going to be a spy movie. This is going to be a fucking, you know, a comedy. This is going to be, like, they made it. Now, what they're doing is they're just like, okay, we're at the top. We're, we're considered the best, you know, comic book thing. So let's just put out stuff. Like, we're just going to put out stuff. We're going to, you know, we, we, if we hit these certain things, we know they're going to be happy. You know, like, that's that's what they're thinking. And now I think they're realizing that that's not, people aren't coming out in droves to see the stuff. Like, the biggest, the biggest comic book movie this summer was Spider-Verse. And that's not a Marvel movie. You know, that's, that's, that's not a Marvel movie. So that, I mean, it's a Marvel character, but it's not a Marvel movie. So, I mean, I think people want superhero movies, but they want, you know, good ones, like good stories back to go back to doing it like that. Like if you're going to tell a time travel story, tell a time travel story. You know what I mean? Don't add all this little shit inside of it to, you know, satisfy everyone in the crowd. There's going to be people that hate it no matter what. Dude. Like, that's what I've always said. Like, even in the even in the one I was doing this weekend or this week, where we were talking about it, about the project they were doing. I said, you know. I go, I think you guys have done a great job with it. Like, it's really good. And I go, there's going to be people that hate it. Like, don't get me wrong. And he's like, I know, I know. I'm like, yeah, but I'm all, it's fucking good. Like, I'm telling you blindly, it's good. I like it. You know, I'm going to tune in for this thing. You know, I will watch it. Don't, I kept telling him, don't spoil it for me. I want to know what's going to happen. It's a creator on one shot. Yeah, hey, that's pretty cool. You know, I it, one of the things that you know I was I was saying during the the final phase of the Marvel movies, you know, everybody got all hyped up and excited for Black Panther, but I really think that that was the beginning of the end for the MCU. I think Black Panther is a fairly underwhelming sort of film. I think people got excited for the social activism side of things, like oh, you got to go see it because it's the first black superhero movie or whatever, and then. They still had a couple of good ones in the barrel after that. You know, they had Infinity War after that. Um, I think that the second Guardians they still was had after the pull that. of the establishment at that point. Right. But then then, you know, when they put Captain Marvel out, then you were like, oh, oh, shit, they can actually do a bad movie. And I think I've argued for a long time that while Endgame is an amazing culmination of everything that we saw, I really think that it was a stumbling across the finish line. Uh, there was there was a lot of stuff that took place in Endgame that was real garbage, and it's only the the glitz and the, the kind of the what do you call it the the satisfaction of seeing everything come to a conclusion that kind of carried you through. But between Infinity War and Endgame, Infinity War is the stronger film by by a long shot, um, and. You know, we were just watching the... I got one of- better for you, Nando. Blank man. <laughs> Handyman. Look, I'm, I'm with you, Nando. Blade was out for a long time. All credit to Wesley Snipes and, and stuff like that. Um, but this is part of the new narrative, right? It's like when you watch uh, What's Her Nuts from The Hunger Games. Talk about being the first, like, you know, true female action hero in a movie. And you're just like... Were you born yesterday? And it's the same thing with Black Panther. Everybody gets hyped about Black Panther, and you're like, "Bro, this has been done like a long time ago." You know, we've yeah. we've been here for a long time. So it's it it's part of this failure to recognize the past, to honor the past, um, and that's what we're seeing in current MCU because every male hero that came before has to be emasculated. Like Hawkeye is emasculated, Hulk is emasculated, Captain America disappears. Iron Man is killed. Um, Thor, fucking Thor, Thor is yeah. Thor is made into a blob and then has like a midlife crisis, and then uh, <laughs> they 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 make Nick Fury just like Luke Skywalker 2.0. It, it like all they're destroying the past and giving us trash for the present, and nobody wants it, <laughs> especially the fans. Yeah, and it, and it's possible to like. <clears throat> it's like a for the sake of for 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 the sake of diversity, which <laughs> which can be done right. 
You know, diversity <laughs> diversity can be done right. Ellen Ripley was a f- super strong female character. You know, uh, Predator. Aside from Arnold, Billy was the most badass motherfucker. Yep. Went to go fight the Predator with a knife, cut himself. Yeah. Yep. Like, there's no, they, history. I've said it before, and I'll say you say you hit it right on the nose. The moment Black Panther, when they kept bragging about it, it's the first black superhero, I said, "Oh, this movie is gonna suck." I was like, if that's how you have to sell the movie, then it's going to suck. Like, that's that's why I don't see certain movies when everyone's like, oh, you got to see it because of this or that. I'm like, well, no, that means it's going to suck, dude. Like, if you have to pitch me on that, then that means it sucks. If you can't tell me the story and make me go, oh, dude, like, you know, pitch me Alien. You can tell. You don't need to say that, you know, Ellen Ripley is the fucking one that's going to be the way you say there's these people on a fucking ship. You know, they, they get stuck with this and they can't get off and then it'd be one by one, they're dying and you got to figure out who's going to do it. And when you watch that movie, that's that's why she's such a perfect uh, archetype for a woman hero, because she starts as just a normal person. You know what I mean? But right. by the end of the movie, she's fucking more badass than anyone on the fucking ship you know what i mean and then by the time you get to the sequel it's even the same she's even more badass you know what right. i mean like that's well that me- hey that mexican chick was pretty badass though oh no, yeah no Brad i agree no fucking badass. yeah yeah no she's or badass like, too you've ever been mistaken yeah. for a you've been mistaken for a man no, no <laughs> you <laughs> I mean, that, that alias one was so awesome it's like oh yeah no, so many the, good and, 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 and and that's what I tell people all the time when we when we talk when we discuss like storylines and stuff. I'm always explaining it doesn't matter if it's a girl, a guy, whatever it is, right? Whatever character it is, they gotta have you, growth. You have, though. They have to grow. They have to. You have to love them for some. They reason. have to be flawed them. and they have to grow. They can't just right. be amazing. They can't just be able to beat the Jedi Master, the, the fucking Sith Lord, out of the box. Right out the gate. <clears throat> right and that's that's why like again like when i when i've written stuff myself like right off the top everyone laughs they're always like oh this is a vargas hero because fucking my guys are always like people that don't know what they're doing you know what i mean as much as i love the 80s for like rambo being trained as a green beret you know and that's every why every movie is starring john mcclain <laughs> pretty much dude like i've always loved that that idea is that like even even like a couple times they, they've given me stuff and like there was one where it was a uh, it, was, it was a guy a group of guys going after a cartel and they when they were talking the i kept you know you do it like oceans 11 there's a group of them so everyone has their certain things but everyone had uh, a big flaw that would fuck up the mission so the one guy had to always watch out for the other guy you know what i mean like it made so it added extra <laughs> drama into it and everyone liked it, but when we got to shoot it, it's it was horrible. <laughs> like we were like, "Oh fuck, dude, we, we got to fix this shit, dude." So, I mean, that happens too a lot, I and mean, that's why I give our movies a lot of leeway. Like I'm just like, okay, maybe they thought this was gonna go good, and they already went into it, and they were just like, "Fuck it, we're just gonna stick it in there." Like that, you know. To me, that's what Fast X was. In fact, <laughs> this weekend. I was at my family, my aunt turned uh, 80 years old. We had a big party for him and stuff. And my buddy that, that does the work at Universal, uh, I, I she does all like the financials and stuff. And I was like, I looked at her, I'm, all, I, I'm, I'm waiting for my fucking check, dude. I told you, I want my check back for Fast and the Furious, dude. And she's laughing her ass. So she's like, well, it's part one. I go, I don't care if it's part 12. Just fucking give me my money back, dude. That was half a movie and shit. And she's laughing her ass off and she and you know this is insider information is that they're trying to plan you know how they brought everyone back <laughs> they're trying to kill them all off because it's too expensive to have everybody in the movie <laughs> I love that's kind that. of the deal it. right well that's the problem mm-hmm. right that they've created this 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 model for, for the movies to be successful that has these ridiculous upfront fucking costs to where they built it into where if you're not pulling a billion bucks, yeah. it's yeah. a failure. It's like, fuck, dude, you don't need, you know, well, I don't but know. If, if, but the, if, if history repeats itself, okay, this, this is what I have to say. If history repeats itself, 
we're about to get the golden age of independence. Like that's what we're about to get because what's going to end up happening is after all these strikes and stuff like that, everyone's got time on their hands and they're going to be sitting at home fucking doodling fucking ideas and they're going to figure out it's cheaper now to make an independent movie than it has ever been in the history of fucking the world. So they're going to go out and start making their own stuff. Exactly. Like, you know, like you could literally do quality stuff. So, I mean, I, I, again, I've already been getting calls and people have been talking to me about it. So, I mean, it, that, and I'm excited for that because independent filmmaking is the best. You know, like studios ruin a lot of shit, you know, and well, I don't think they mean to. Yeah, it, but, the, well, no, it, it, because of the whole ESG and diversity, equity, and inclusion thing, they actually do intend to ruin it because they're devoted to their ideology. But I like, I like what you're saying about independent films, but the one thing that the independent films have to do is they have to break away from a lot of these celebrities. These celebrities, so this whole writer strike and the actor strike and everything like that, I have a lot of sympathy for the low level guys, the guys that, you know, are, you know, struggling to make paycheck to paycheck because they're not getting paid the big bucks for the films. They're not getting million dollar contracts. These million dollar people, these are the people that need to be excised. They're a cancer. So if you can get them out of the way and do your independent films with like new faces, with people that are, you know, bringing their, their own stuff in and not like, you know, the the 45th film with uh, Chris Evans in it, then you're going to do well. And you just need to cut those people off. They're, they have no business striking at all because they're not affected by it. Their, their last paycheck is going to pay for the rest of their life. Well, they, you, they, you're, you're right on that, dude. And it's, but like the beauty, okay, so there, there's this great, film that i'll watch dude um, whenever whenever i got time down when i got nothing to do it's a documentary called a decade under the influence and ifc made it and it's like six hours long and i'll play it in the background but the beauty of it was it explained how we got al pacino robert de niro like you name any big name actor you know what i mean they came from that era because it they were nobodies you know just like you said but they weren't hollywood faces you know what i mean they were just good fucking actors and you, they put them in front of the camera and people fell in love with them dude you know like that character and shit so yeah we you need that because like the people you can't there's no no one should, no one should get those checks right now because no one is arnold schwarzenegger no one cool. is sylvester stallone where you put their name on the cover and everyone goes, no one needs to see the trailer. No one needs to see nothing. You can just put Stallone is stop or my mom will shoot. Everyone will go see it just <laughs> right, because, you right. know what I mean? Like, you know, like. They, 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 Except, they, I think Tom Cruise still got yeah. some pull. No, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. He's the last one. Yes, I agree. I agree. <laughs> he's the last. He's the last of the Mohicans right there. Like he is legit. And he, and he and he literally like pulls it off. You know what I mean? He never fails. Like he he does do. He he goes the the extra extent. So I think he deserves it. But like you were saying, like Chris Evans. You know, that's to me that's the downfall of playing a superhero. Is once you do that, like yeah, like everyone loves you, but that's who you are. They don't love you. They love Captain America. Right. Like that's what I mean. Like they love that well, costume. And, Look, I, I think I think that's partially true, but I think the reality is is that too many actors today are activists. And so, for example, if you look at the the core MCU guys, like nobody gives two craps about Chris Evans or Mark Ruffalo, you know, and, and even to a certain extent Robert Downey Jr. Although I think he kind of sticks above because of all of the the work that he's done. But everybody loves Chris Hemsworth. Rio. Everybody loves Chris Hemsworth, and why? Because he's not an activist. He might he be, just, but he's not out there promoting it like the other guys. No, he, he has fun. You know, he has fun. Right. That's what it is. Yeah. Like, he has a good time. Like, you know, he he knows what he has. But the rest <laughs> of them have Tell all, turned into, all turned into these finger-wagging, preachy idiots. And Look, I just don't want to see them. You're freaking jesters. You're an <laughs> actor. Go right. and do your job. You're an actor and do your part. And then, I mean... I remember watching an interview once with Mark Harmon and he's like, look, he goes, if they're going to pay me to do a, a part, I'm going to go in, I'm going to act the part and then I'm going to go home. I'm going to get my paycheck because that's my job. My job is an actor and right. this is what I'm going to do. I, you know, the rest of this stuff, that's for things to talk about well, here's when the, I'm at You know, if they want to I, do you know, and say other things, I would be okay with that. 
provided that they actually took the time to know what the fuck they were talking about. Mm. You I know, know, if, yeah, I have, I have it, a good, it, it, even better one. Make a movie about it. Huh. That, that will sell. Like, no, exactly. That's why. And so they get they get on your platform and you talk about it. Like back in the day, if there was a pro- deer hunter, we all love deer hunter. Deer hunter is a great fucking movie, but that's literally a, a a person's version, a vision of what his political statement of what was going on at that time. You know what I mean? Like that's it's exactly surfer code, dude. You know what I mean? Like people find. You, you, and that's the thing we're missing now. Like film now is not that. If it's not a spectacle, it doesn't come out. You know what I mean? And then that jet, what's, uh, what's her name? The, the Hunger Game girl, Lawrence. Oh, Lawrence. Jennifer Lawrence. Her, her new movie fucking was the one I was hoping. Like I had like, as weird as it sounds, I had my fingers crossed that it would make some money because then they would see that you don't need to have everything blowing up to make people go to the movies, but they could, they did, that didn't do good. You know what I mean? So that's just like proving the right. studio. I right. actually right. like that movie. But I think Right. No, it could be good. But I think that, movie, so that goes, movie was good actually. I saw it with Jay. It was a really good movie. Right, but this yeah, goes back good. to the, this goes back to the opening question for this whole segment that we've been doing is that why didn't it do good? And I think it's because of Jennifer Lawrence. Because people it's not fatigue. People are disgusted by these people. So they hear Jennifer Warren's out there they're crossing you know, the flipper. flapping her tongue. Yeah, they're and they're crossing. like, I'm not watching this I don't shit. want to watch their Even if it's good. The movie because of her right. personal things instead of going to the movie to, right. to enjoy. Because to, all they, they can hear is the mouthpiece. I think that happens with actresses like Brie Larson. Right. It's happening with this new actress for the Snow White movie. Right. Like, you know what I mean? Like, these, they're saying just that Gal Gadot is starting to get put into that category yep. now, unfortunately. Because they're starting to like come out more and be more comfortable talking about, I, I you know, politics on either side. Because you've got people on the right and the left that are actors that are doing both of this stuff. But if you start getting too lippy, too mouthy, too much about that, <coughs> people people have a problem separating the character from the, the from the actor. Yeah, Jordan, Jordan said you know it. I mean? the conservatives it, buy shoes too. Yeah, so it's just, it, it goes into these, it, it blurs, and when you see him on screen, you're like, I don't want to see what I see over here on TV when they're doing their interviews in the movie. Even though that might not be, because she's an actor, so she's going to play a different part there. She's not herself in that movie, you know what I mean? But people, it's like the reverse, people can't separate the two for different, you know what I mean? Well, and they should. Before, it's like, oh, you're so-and-so, you're this, this, they, you're not Jennifer Lawrence, you're Katniss Everdeen. And that's how they, or you're Mystique, you're that person, that, that character. Now it's like, it's it's flipped. Now they won't go see the next Hunger Games movie with Jennifer Lawrence in it because they see Jennifer Lawrence. They don't see Katniss Everdeen anymore. You know what I mean? It's kind of, you stop it. Yeah, it's um, stupid cat. Well, that, it, that was that, that that's that hit kind of deep, Liz. I, 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 I have my moments every now and then. They are few and far between, but when I get them, spot on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, but that that's that goes back to <laughs> that, but they, even that goes back to even fucking us in um, uh, saying talking about Tom Cruise, right? Like I think I think that he, he he has been a great job of hiding his you know thoughts about things and shit like that. He had a slip up with the Katie Holmes thing, and then you could see that his movies kind of declined after that. But then once he was like silent for a while, and then he came back with Mission Impossible, started doing that. You not once have you heard him preach about anything except his fucking movies. Anytime you see him talking, he's talking about his movies. He's talking about this. So, I mean, you know, I think there's well, room to think what you guys are saying is true. Yeah. And, and part of that is because Scientology is an older cult than the woke people. So they kind of have their, <laughs> they kind of have their PR down better. You know what I mean? They know how to handle controversy. The woke people don't know how to handle controversy yet. So, um, and, and this goes back to the thing, you know, part of the reason why Tom Cruise does so well is because he at least honors the past. He honors what came before. You know, Top Gun Maverick was so was so did so well because it honored what came before it didn't mock it or belittle it or tear it down or deconstruct it or reinterpret it it just was a, a legit sequel with that same character in mind and yeah. 
you, and the thing is, is that people need to understand that that's the thing that succeeds because it's built into the fabric of our, our reality. We are supposed to honor our forebears. The commandment is to honor your mother and father that you may live long in the land. So if you're going to honor the past, you're going to succeed in the future. But because we hate the past, because we tear down our statues, we tear down our heroes, we destroy our mythologies. Look at us. We don't even know what boys and girls are anymore. We've lost the capacity to think rationally. And the, that's why pop culture suffers, because we hate what came before us, even though what came before us is good. Well, even like when you talk about the Tom Cruise like thing with Mission Impossible, you brought up Maverick, but he even honored the Mission Impo the original Mission Impossible. Right. That's right. You know what right. I mean? I mean, yeah, they're over the top. <laughs> they've got these big budgets, and they can do all these explosions, and they can do all these great like stunts and stuff like yeah. that. But they still honored the the heart and the soul of what the original Mission Impossible right. was. That's correct. Yeah. We no, have yeah. to get off. Well, that's. That's the way, and and again, but to me that that bring you know brings it back to superhero stuff. Is that like, if if someone ever, I'm telling you, if someone ever was like, hey, Fuzzy, we're gonna give you a superhero movie, Superman, I would say no. I'd be like, no way. There's no way I can make a movie what everybody would is gonna enjoy. You know what I mean? Like, I know a small group of people might enjoy it, but I, I there's no way that I'm gonna make something that's gonna you know blow someone's socks off on it because it's just i would make my version of superman and i don't think people would you know not everyone would love my version of superman and shit so you know that that's that's when i always feel for guys that go into to comic book movies or movies that have a following you know what i mean like jack reacher we're speaking of tom cruise right you jack should <laughs> We lost the only three. We lost the only three people watching already. Thanks, thanks, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good job, mate. <laughs> but you know, dude, like, so you got, you got to always, you got, like. That's why I've always enjoyed something that comes out of nowhere. You know what I mean? Like John Wick's a prime example. Like that came out of nowhere. You know what I mean? That was just a guy. He came up with an idea. They they did it and it fucking took off. And then it just the mythos is building and building. The movies are getting bigger and bigger. So I, you know, that's why I love the Fast and the Furious. That was a small, low budget, like you know, movie that they thought nobody was gonna watch. And there's fucking eleven movies now of it. You know, like it, they, now it's getting a little hokey. But you well, know, I'm, the I'm, thing I'm, about I'm it going. too is that in the second one, the second one was shit. It almost came off like a straight to video one. It's like they had the first one, and they had written it off as a straight to straight to video one. But they didn't have more wheels than they thought. So then they fucking they jumped back on it and then they went with it. It was weird. Well, number number three was supposed to be when they with Justin Lin because I love Justin Lin and Justin Lin was talking when they originally got him to do it. It was supposed to be a straight to video. That's why it was Tokyo Drift. Like it was not supposed to come out in the theater or anything. They were just gonna put it out on DVD and just call it a day. But when they saw it, they were like, "Holy shit, this is a fucking movie! Like we can start a new franchise and shit." But then everyone and the the cards. The, the little note cards at the end kept asking where Vin Diesel was. Like, that was the comment. Like, where is Vin Diesel and Paul Walker? Like, are they going to show up sometime at the end? So that last little tidbit of fucking Vin Diesel being there was shot at Universal Studios reshoot. parking lot. Yeah, they reshot it and brought Vin in. And the only reason way he would do it is if they if Universal signed over the rights to Riddick. And so that that's how we've been getting these little these Riddick movies and shit like that. So he owns Riddick, and which is one of my all-time favorite characters. So the I first one was good. The first and third one is good. The second one is like a good comic book movie. Which one's the third one? Shit, maybe I, maybe I missed out on one of them. <laughs> it's one with Dave, but Dave Batista's in it. But it's very much like the first one. I liked them all, even the second <laughs> one. Is that the one, the, is that the one with, with Carl the Urban? One? Yeah, that one's fun. Like that's what I mean. It's like a well, they're, they're, gonna build, they're gonna burn like if they go out 
No, that's the second one, I think. Is that the second one? Yeah, with the Necromongers. One. That's, how much, that's how much I love fucking Riddick, dude. They got me. I love You have a Dusty figure? <laughs> I got a Dusty figure I keep here with me next to me all the time, dude. Pitch Black was great. I love Pitch. And that's another one that's like story That's a great wise, movie. Like, literally. That's the first story. Pitch Black. Is it Pitch Black, the first Chronicles of Riddick, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, okay. Just make it sure like, that my brain still functions. But the movie starts, and he's the thought. bad guy. He's the he's the bad guy. The movie starts, he's the bad guy. Right. Fucking, you know, the, and then by the by the end of the movie, the good guy's the bad guy, and the bad guy's the good I'm like, oh, it's fucking, yeah. you know. The chef's I got to find that on. What was on the second movie? one? It's the one where the necromongers come and they fucking um they they like take your soul and like you know they okay. they and, and Judy they Judy Dench was in it and yes. Okay, what was the third Carl one? Urban. The third one is is he's on so he he's stuck on an island because he's been hiding out and these people find out where he's at and that there's still a big bounty on him and he just well, starts picking them off one by one. What well, well, pissed me off on the third one because they never they never mentioned black. he was when he turned into the king how he lost it and stuff like that on the movies like right they just went straight to him being a a, a, a you know a on the run kid. again on the yeah. run they never mentioned like well at the end of two he was uh the main no the he, main cat. he does say something it's right in the beginning he says that he couldn't take it no more and so he just quit <laughs> and then then that's the now have, have one line of dialogue one line of dialogue yeah <laughs> That's that's literally what it was, and so I'm like, you know, I but I I liked it because it yeah, has it. the feel of nope. of number of number yeah. one, and he's working on number four Looks right now, so three. I'm excited. Goddamn bug is in here trying to fucking kamikaze me. Back up. Sorry, we got a skunk in our backyard right now. Uh-uh. I went down okay. the hallway to go get because we're on like the we're on the ground floor, and I went into I went down the hallway to go get the laundry out. And I saw some movement, and I thought, oh, shit. Uh-oh. It scared me at first, but I was like, no, it's just a reflection because of the light behind me in the window. And then I looked again because I just see this, like, tail go by. And all of a sudden, he, like, looks up and, like, the fuck? Get out of here. So we had a, we've had skunk problems. The dog got sprayed the other night. The whole house, like, they were upstairs. And all of a sudden, we're, like, I'm typing at the computer, and I'm like. You look like Clue. <laughs> we thought it was like, oh. And then next thing I know, like, I get a text from Julie upstairs and she's all, hey, by the way, uh, the dog got sprayed, so <laughs> it's going to smell. I'm like, oh, great. For like two days now, huh? It's not that bad. I think the skunk came back. Yeah, he's back. He's in the backyard right now. He's back. Having wildlife in, in our uh, backyard deers skunk we've got this fat raccoon that knows how to open up the trash cans so we'll i'll go out there to go to get the trash cans open and he's like sitting on the top like java like just reaching into the trash bag and eating the food out it's like sup oh shoot <laughs> what the hell <laughs> get out of here he just looks at you like when i'm done bitch <laughs> that's how he's like and I'm like, okay i'll come back <laughs> you do you That's great. <laughs> so, are there, are there any more DC movies left over in the pipe? Aquaman. Oh yeah, Aquaman. Shit, I forgot about that one. Is I don't that know, coming I, out? I, I don't. I don't know if it's gonna be coming out or not. Dude, speaking of Aquaman, did you guys see the J- Johnny Depp uh, Amber Heard uh, Netflix thing? No. I yet. saw it on there, but I haven't. I, that's no. like number five on my list. <laughs> I, I think I, I saw enough of that when it was happening. Yeah, same here. No, it, it was it was a cool little documentary. I thought because, like, it was talking about like you know they show it as it unfolds. You know they tell you a story, but in the end they're like you know how everyone was like for Johnny Depp and you know he's getting screwed over this and that. At the end, they show this evidence that they that the judge wouldn't allow into the court, and when they show it, it shows like Johnny Depp was an asshole, and like was this, and it was like the 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 thing I thought was funny is like it's it's like showing you like look just because you love a guy because he was Captain Jack Sparrow doesn't mean that he couldn't do anything like this you know kind of thing, and I was like, 
I like that. I was like, that's cool. I was like, very cool. Well, you know, what I want to ask about that documentary is how much time did they spend on Amber Heard pooping in the bed? <laughs> it, it, it wasn't much. I was that's what that's literally what I was what, waiting for because I wanted to you know where they, cut, they wait, where they cut to like the guy who was there. He's like, I was there, and she let a big <laughs> shit out. You know, like that kind of thing. But that part never came, so I was like, fuck, dude. But I was already in it. Like so, again, uh, well, I'm not gonna watch it. But what did he do that the judge wouldn't allow? It was um, testimony from other other people about him being violent. And then, like, there was footage they show of him. I guess I had never seen it before, but I guess the other people had where he's like yelling at her and she's got the camera and he's like bashing in shit and fucking being drunk and, you know, losing his mind towards her. And, but then because she looks at the camera and like kind of smiles, like snickers, they were like, oh, they, she set her, set him up and, you know, this and that to, to lose, get upset and, I was like, oh, so like it wasn't nothing like a big bombshell, but it was just like evidence that proved that because the way they pitched it during the whole trial was that this guy was, you know, they brought on ex-girlfriends and other people saying like he would never do nothing like that. You know, we the, the some of the stories of what she said happened, they had other people there saying it didn't happen that way. But then like the ev- there was evidence they're saying from other people saying it did happen that way, but they wouldn't allow them to come to court. So she set him up, in other words. So basically, she's a bitch still. So, yeah. No, I, I'm not. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that both people are guilty. I'm just what she's I'm a bitch. saying. I, they're both bitches. They both are. They both are bitches. They shouldn't have been with each other. They fuck it. It's like having getting a girlfriend and then living together and and the <laughs> bad shit that would happen. You know what I mean? Like just you know, havoc. We know. We hate them all. You know what I mean? We we, we know. I think Johnny Depp's the same way. <laughs> So, no, she's, she was a big old bitch. So have a I agree. Johnny Depp. But a- anyone that shits on a bed is fucking gets Gross. points in my books. No, I, hey, that's that takes. You know how hard that is, dude. Like to, to cover, <laughs> like to, like that. Just just the, the 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 ability to do it is fucking like wow. Like that's awesome, dude. So I give her points on that one, dude. So yeah, she's she's up there on the hot crazy scale for sure. Yep. Uh, I don't know about the hot because you, you see the lady with all that cocaine she's doing and ain't helping her out. <laughs> she was already anorexic. There was a the first movie I saw her in that she was hot. It was a it was a horror movie where like vines got into their skin or whatever. They're like in Mexico. The ruins. The ruins. Yeah, that was a good one. I like that one. No, the one I thought she was just drive angry. That was the one she was hot in, dude. Fucking did that. Oh, that was hella. Like, I was like, mm, who's With that Nicholas girl? Coppola? Yep. I was like, damn, who's that girl? <laughs> now, I don't want to know who that girl is. I, <laughs> <laughs> I say the no. Level of, <laughs> the level of crazy. Is, uh, <laughs> is Nando still in the. Uh... In the viewing audience, is he still there? I think he. I think he went to bed. I can't tell. I was gonna say because uh, just to go over what we were kind of covering before the the show started, when we come out there to uh, Cali, uh, I know you guys requested a uh, a Dungeons and Dragons night, so I just wanted to make sure that uh, they, uh, Nate and uh, Havoc and Fuzzy and Nando, you guys are all gonna be the the group that we're going to get to play. So I'll ma- make sure that you guys... Uh, it's going to be a fun... It's, it's going to be, it's, fun it's gonna be a good time. But, <laughs> but listen, so we're going to have to take a night where you guys are free. And by free, I mean we're going to need like a good stretch of time, like five or six hours. I mean... Cool. As long so, as Havoc's buying dinner, I'm good, dude. You know? <clears> that's all I, I can thing, The only thing that I, I request that you don't do is you guys... Don't get drunk or high before you come because it kind of ruins. Nick, the Nick, Buzzy's out. Nick, I'm out. Nick, I, I don't go a day. I don't go. Look, I just. Yeah, but it's happening right now as we it's speak. Like no, 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 look, there's a, there's, a, there's a difference between so. there's a difference between functional and being silly. You know what I mean? Wow, uh, functionality is fine, but like if you're like giggling every five seconds, it's gonna like oh. ruin the 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 fun of it. So. 
He's the high day, right now. What are you talking the, about? Yeah, He's fine. The, day, the days of my giggles are... are <laughs> they, they left long. I wish. I swear to I get mad at people when they... Look, when they I'm, not, smoke I'm not trying to be a Karen or something like that. I, 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 have, I have respect for whatever you want to do. I'm just saying that... Um, Dungeons and Dragons, while being uh, like a game, there is a certain element of seriousness that adds to its entertainment value. So we'll give Steve one of these. <laughs> no, Steve will already fall asleep just because it's his natural state. Yeah, yeah that's, that's true. Easy Snorlax. That's right. <laughs> now, do I get to bring my own figure? I got all no, I'll, I'll figures. supply the figures. All right, all right. Out. Yeah. Because the miniatures have to be a certain size. So okay. There's a <clears> dude <throat> with the thong. It's mine. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> Fuck yeah. He's gonna be the drunken master fighter. Fuck, oh yeah, dude. I watch Jackie Chan shit. I know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I can't That's wait. Cool. That'll be fun. That'll be that'll be a good time. So I don't know if we want to do that offline where we figure out what day that's going to be, so that all of you guys can. It has to be during be the week, though. During the week. Because our weekends are kind of. <coughs> what about a, like a Friday? Uh, Friday night. Yeah, that's fine. Ooh. That'll be easier. Are there going to be strippers? And midget uh, ones. Well, I can take my pants off if that helps. <laughs> I'm in. I'm in. As long as they're as long as they're American flag. We can, we, hey, you know what okay. we can do? We can we can make the game shirts only. <laughs> <laughs> Look, me me and Havoc's titties can't be out that long, dude. They never seen that's daylight why, that's that why much. Shirts only. <laughs> oh, you only wear a shirt. Well, you don't want to see the turtle that the, the head that goes down there. So it's it's just scary. <laughs> And It'll pop in and out like last viewer, right? It'll look there. like. Yeah, Do you have yeah, like yeah. a big elaborate table with mountains <laughs> and streams and shit on it, or? Uh, I, I'm debating right now whether or not I'm going to bring my 3D terrain, or if I'm just going to do like yeah, the standard you, you terrain. Half this room well, no, 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 because if <laughs> I'm if I'm planning out the, the specific scenarios, I would know ahead of time the pieces that I would bring. There's two so, different ways he's got tile, uh, or he's got just like flat tiles that the flat, have like the flat tiles have printed. imagery on it, but yeah. it would just be a flat surface. There's there's a lot to be said for a three dimensional surface, but it's a lot of stuff to haul two thousand miles. True. Yeah, so, no, don't do that. No, don't yeah, don't go that far, dude. Just bring, let us let us dip our toe in the water. You know, I should use you don't want to. It, it, it's we're we're virgins. Remember, we don't want Dirk Diggler, dude. You know what I'm saying? We want you know. Just, Look, you know, just average. Yeah, even, even, as virgins, just even, even as virgins, what do you want? The crack whores or the escorts? <laughs> <laughs> well, it matters on what I'm in the mood for. You see, if it's something <laughs> weird, you're going for the crack whore. But if you're going, if you're going for something entertaining, you go with the escort. Do you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> If I scream, my wife is sitting next to me, so that means she stabbed me or punched me as I said that. So, gotcha. Just letting you know. <laughs> <clears throat> she just gave me the fuck you look. I don't think I'm getting. I'm think I'm sleeping on the couch tonight. Yeah, you can share. <laughs> no, I'm sleeping in the bed. I don't know. What you're <laughs> Oh, we'll shit, see dude. how comfortable you are. <laughs> are you are you are you one of those young ladies that fucking have fifty pillows in the bed? No, she has That's two. My, my wife, cats, though. She she's got fucking like a brick wall of pillows. She nests around her, and and then yes, yeah, she does. And so when if I like want to talk to her, I have to knock. And then like the slack gets pulled aside <laughs> like that, and she looks at me and she's like, "May I help you?" And I was like, "Um, good night, good night." <laughs> no, I have two pillows, and I don't use I don't always use both of them, so it just depends on like my shoulders or how I'm sleeping. And the cats, the cats are pretty good. Usually, only one sleeps in the bed now, and they sleep between our two pillows at the top of the bed. 
the other one sleeps on the couch if one of us isn't sleeping on the couch if one of us is sleeping on the couch then both cats are in the bed it's, it's an interesting Iggy. setup I was thinking of Iggy while we were watching that documentary. I was like, the only other guy I know that's got a mustache is oh, that is Iggy. Right? Well, Iggy, <laughs> right. Iggy's, Iggy's in Vegas right now. Why are you watching us, Iggy? Iggy's in Vegas. What is he? What are you doing, Iggy? Go yeah, there, Iggy, you're doing on it black. wrong. You're 20 on be, black, my friend. You're supposed to be butt naked and wrestling with some Vegas showgirls and shit, dude. What the hell? You're supposed to be spinning them on your mustache. Sports. It just <laughs> yeah. that side right in there. You gotta start asking him for a mustache ride. What's going on? Dang. Drunk in the room. It's, it's, not even, it's not even 11 o'clock, buddy. Come on. What's going he on? It was hard when he got there. <laughs> Let's get ready to gamble. All right. Whatever you do, don't take Havoc's advice, okay? If he says bet on black, bet on red. Just do the Man, opposite. Man, I always win, except for the last no, time. No, you the do. Last time, but it's like. What would Blade do? Always bet on black. Gotcha. <laughs> Go with your comic, inner nerd comic. All right. <laughs> do what they tell you to do. <laughs> and order yourself a martini shaken, not stirred. Ladies go nuts for that shit. They're like, this guy's classy. I've seen it in a documentary about a spy. His name was Bond something. I don't know. Jimmy. Jimmy Bond. There you go, Jimmy Bond. <laughs> there, I think that sounded right. That sounded right. <laughs> Jimmy Bond. Dude, speaking of which, you know what I watched this weekend that I fucking hadn't seen in years? And I was like, oh, God, I'm going to torture these guys. I can't wait. Oh. If looks can kill. Have you guys ever seen that? Yeah, With I've Richard watched Grieco? Movies. I've seen them no, all. It's Richard Grieco. Remember oh, Richard that's Grieco? Right. Oh, oh, yeah. Don't treat. Yeah, Richard Green, oh, I, dude, it's awesomely bad. Like, I could not stop laughing, dude. Yes, dude, it was so good. Dude. I was like, oh, that that's right. Me. It's so awesome, dude. But it was literally a teenage James. It's gonna Bond, be right dude. up there with Double Impact. Fuck oh yeah, me. yeah. It's very much like that. Like it's it's got that where you're watching it, going like, why am I watching this? And then something will happen, you'll go. Okay, let's keep watching. And then, like, some stupid, oh, man. And then, well, for, well, first of all, Double Impact is amazing. I don't know what you guys are talking about. So, uh, <laughs> uh, it, must be, it must be the end of the world because I agree with Sanchez. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, buddy. Everyone loves Double Impact. It's Double Van Damme. You can't That's say right. that, dude. <laughs> Jean-Claude Van Damme and Jean-Claude Van Jean -Claude Damme. Jean-Claude Van Damme. Double Impact. <laughs> Yes, two of them. Claude Van Damme is the same damn movie. Like, over One of the best over. trailers. Yes, two of them. That's one of the best trailers ever cut, dude. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's one of the best ones. We should just do a John Claude Van Damme, like, watch. Like, for a month. Like, pick, everyone pick, like, a couple John Claude Van Damme. Like, Hard Target. Time you Cop. Are next. <laughs> I'm picking Street Fighter. Ooh. Yeah. God, that's, that's the poor best Raul right. Julia. Oh, uh, yeah. Raul right. Julia's <laughs> last movie. Lick the bottom of a taxi cab on pictures. Well, what's the other <laughs> one? Lionheart? It's Lionheart, right? Lionheart, yeah. Lionheart. That, that was like the 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 wannabe Got blood beat. sport. Got your beat. No retreat, no surrender. Oh, yeah. Time cop. The what's the one where he's called Time cop. Chance? Time cop is badass. That's, uh, that's, that's hard, hard target. target. That's, my, that's my favorite. Because my mama took one. <laughs> <laughs> no, the best, the best one, like the one that's got the best one-liners, is Double Team with fucking Dennis Rodman, dude. Him and Dennis oh Rodman. But, <laughs> that, <laughs> he's there's literally shots of Dennis Rodman doing kung fu, and it, it, he's black. Like the, it's all shadow, so you know it's a stunt double, and it's the shittiest voiceover. <laughs> Lay up. Slam dunk <laughs> as he punches the guy in the face. Oh my god. <laughs> oh god, it's so good. I love it, dude. Was, no, wait, we was need to do a the... Steven Seagal one. Wasn't he in uh, um, Universal Soldier? Yep. Oh, nice. Huh. Did you spell that right, though, Iggy? Iggy's like the worst typer in the world. <laughs> and he never goes back over his shit. 
Yeah, dude. There's like there's John Claude's got. <laughs> Iggy, to doesn't, Iggy, Iggy doesn't type. He just he, uh, he uses the uh, the talk thing, and then uh, uh, Siri, Siri's trying to fix it or whatever he has. Oh no, he has like an Android, so whatever he uses. But there's there's a dude I watch where all he does is talk shit about Steven Seagal movies and stuff. And it shit kills me. Like I'll sit there every week. He comes out with a new one. He's like, Steven Seagal. Like he did. They did Steven Seagal versus Rob Schneider. Who is the most badass? And like Rob Schneider won because he, he was like, <laughs> I'll send it to you guys on the thing. It's so funny, dude. Oh my goodness. I was like, we gotta do something like that where you just literally bag on fucking one guy. We'll do it. I won't do M Night Shyamalan though. Well, look, I, one of the things that I, I keep thinking about, because we're doing all of these uh, Indian films for uh, Radioactive Curry, is I think it, at the very least, Nate and Fuzzy and I should do like a, a show on the side where we rate like the top five leading ladies from these movies. You know what I mean? And just like come up with the list of, of uh, who's Well, the... you don't think I can find the women's form beautiful? No, but it's a guy's show. So <laughs> sausage party, you know what I'm saying? That's what it's called, the sausage party. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see what that list is gonna be because I know I know for fuzzy that Tina is gonna be on that list for sure. <laughs> Three sausages, one clam, dude. <laughs> oh my god. That's that's a good title right there. <laughs> that's a whole new channel. <laughs> Collection connection after dark show. Yeah, that's dark it right show. there. Every, every week. Oh my god. Man, I, forgot, I forgot about Death Warren and the Quest, too. Oh my god. Oh, funny. The Quest is even better because John Claude Van Damme wrote it and directed it. Oof. That was one of the worst Great. movies I've ever seen. Triple threat on that one. That was the that worst. Does he dance? Does he dance in it? Dude, but that the guy that does the videos that I love, right? He fucking when he whenever whatever John Claude movie it is, right? Whatever one it is, it'll get to like the time cop. They, he goes through the whole movie about like how you know they're gonna come back from, and at the end when he goes to the house, he goes. But before he goes in, he even has time to go and cut a rug, and then they cut to the fucking dance <laughs> scene. The man just fucking dancing. And he's like, <laughs> and after he dances with them, he comes back and kicks them <laughs> <some> ass. <laughs> I love it, dude. Like I'm, oh I'm God. literally in bed watching it. My wife's laughing at me. She's like, "You, you, you look like an idiot right now." I'm like, "Listen to this guy, dude. He's great." <laughs> Man, I love, I love, I love watching these these old. Like, I've been enjoying watching, like every once in a while, whatever comes up. Like I'll just be like, "Oh, what the fuck is that?" I'm like, "Oh, I used to watch that movie," and I'll watch it, and I'll be like, "God, this is fucking horrible." <laughs> Jesus, dude. <laughs> This is way worse than I remember this piece of shit being. Like, or the one that got me the other day that I was like, oh crap, this is actually really good was Orange County. Did you guys ever see that one with Colin uh, Colin Hanks, Tom Hanks' kid, and Jack Black? I like that yeah. one. Yeah. I forgot how good it was. Like, I legit was crying. I was like, oh shit, I'm fucking crying. Like, this stupid movie got me teary eyed. That's a good movie. Damn, maybe you cussing me out in some weird language, dude. That's fucked up. Dude. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, that's the weird. <laughs> Iggy, Iggy, Iggy just sent me some hieroglyphics. Look at that, dude. Right there. Did you you smell know what, Iggy? Right, Iggy, and then he puts the link up. Man, <laughs> like, hey, Iggy. Yeah, you're right. You are drunk. <laughs> that. Links don't work on this, Ig. <laughs> It'll show up in our like um in our like feed. Like in our mess, like on Facebook, that link will show up as a comment. Yeah, but that's it's not there, right there. But yeah. All right, the so filter, we got the filters where they put the heroin. Good. <laughs> we got the second half of Virapon. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then we've got what was the movie that we're doing? The Hunt for Red October. The Hunt, Hunt for, for Red, Red October. October. That's, a, that's a good movie. We need to, Jack we need to Ryan back, Part One. We need to go back to a time of American ascendancy and uh, <laughs> having an actual bad guy on the world stage that's not us. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a great movie right there. Yeah, it's probably you know, it's probably the only Alec Baldwin film that I like. 
You don't. Well, you don't uh, like. Uh, he, he's that, he was good at Gary. Uh, uh, what's it? Gary Glenn Gary Gary Roth. What is it called? What is it called? Uh, yeah, that's a great movie. No, dude, the best. My favorite one. He's no. the best. Boss ever... baby. But what I'm saying, what's the movie? What's the movie called correctly? I forgot. It's Glenn Gary. Glenn Gary. Glenn Gary. Glenn, Gary, Glenn Ross. That's right. You got he, it right. He's he's really good on that one. No, my favorite is him and Kim Basinger in the Getaway. The Getaway remake. That's my favorite, dude. That oh, shit. Good. That was that shit has one of my favorite shootout scenes ever. And Michael like Madsen wearing Ugh. the shadow was good too. Yeah, the shadow was good. I like. You the haven't shadow. seen the shadow. I saw the shadow. You when never it came saw out. the Phantom. I saw the Phantom. The oh, Phantom's the Phantom. awesome. The Phantom? The Phantom? You know, this and you didn't know is that the comic book one? The yeah. Movie it's the one with that, Billy Zane. Oh, okay, scary. that's the first. I'm in Phantoms, bro. That is scary. the first movie that I ever walked out halfway through. I was like, this is garbage. Me and, my, me and my buddy, uh, my, me and my buddy Rudy, we were like, oh, this looks pretty cool. Because we're all like, was it Selma Hyde? Or who was the girl that, that came out that was going to be Chris, like. Uh, Chris, uh, Chris, Chris Swanson. Well, that's the only reason we're going, right? I was like, oh, we'll check this out. Christy it's Swanson in uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And so we're like checking it out. Next thing you know, it's like, what is this garbage? And Dude, even, even even her showing her boobs didn't, didn't save the movie. I was like, <laughs> I, we walked right after. It was like, we walked out. I was like, we want our money back. There's a shot in the Phantom that I love to death. And it's literally him. He, he does like a flip. And he lands on the pirate ship at the end, and then he pulls out the fucking guns, the two yeah. guns, and just the way he shoots them like this, and the way they shoot it is fucking just like I was like, that's oh, it's right, so badass. That's right out of out of a Phantom comic. Yeah, that right was, there, there was like a Dave Stevens, you know, the Rocketeer guy. He um, yeah, Dave Stevens. He he did that a panel shot for that, like it was like in a pinup, and he okay. did that like. That crossover shot, and they, they took it out, and they put that in the movie. Cause that's it, it just is phenomenal. It is it is sexy as shit, dude. Like I, I I remember seeing that as a kid. Like I didn't like the movie that much, and I saw that scene. I was like, oh my god, buy this movie right now. I need to figure out how they did that. How they do that, dude? Like how do you get? Because like when you see certain shots, right? You look at a movie and you go, oh, that's dope. But then in my head, I'll always go, well, how did they get that? Like, you didn't just put the camera in front of the guy. You had to angle a certain way or, like, you know, something like that. So, I oh, I love that shot. So, for me, Phantom, thumb up for me, man. I love Phantom. Well, that was when well, they were doing it. One of the, the worst Phantom, movies they ever made. It was The Shadow, The Phantom, and The Spirit. <laughs> Phantom was it was those horrible. three that they did that came out. Yeah. They were like, let's do some superhero stuff, but we can't do, like, you know, the main, like, Batman and Superman and all that. Let's... Let's find the, the B side. Well, no, uh, the, the pulp the 50s, action yes, the pulp action, the rocket Only team, the shadow knows. Came out. I'd yeah. rather watch, what is it called? Dark Man or whatever it's called? Dark Man. I love Dark, Dark Man. Man. Was good. I'd rather watch yeah, that than fucking awesome. The Phantom. The Dark Man's awesome. Man's awesome. The only the only comic book one that I think that I was like, what the fuck? And you guys are going to be shocked that I said it. It's Superman 4. That was the only one where I remember. I remember <laughs> watching nuclear it going guy? Like, Richard yeah, Pryor going like, with nuclear, nuclear man. man. No, Richard Pryor was number three. Number three, because number three scared me. The number three legit yeah, frightened she me as a child. Yeah, robot at the end. Yeah, that, that fucked me up for a long ass time. <laughs> yeah, dude, I was like, dude. But then when I saw this one, I remember just how like how it was. It was just it was. I was like, this is horrible. Like, what the you fuck know, is this? What's what creeped me out though in Superman Four was when he like scratches him and the way that they like they like peel his skin away. I was like, what the ew, what? <laughs> like check your nails, fool. Did you get someone underneath them? <laughs> it was gross, like how they did like you could see him like scratching like the latex or whatever, and it just it didn't look right. Uh, well, even the fight was cheesy. Like I was like, This is stupid, dude. <laughs> like, come on, man, but yeah, whatever. You know, again, I got Superman, so I was happy in that sense. But I, I remember that was the one like where I was like, "This is bad, like really bad." You make you want to go ride horseback? <laughs> no, <laughs> it made me want to watch RoboCop three again. I'll tell you that. <laughs> that and that's, that's how bad it was. I was like, Robo "Yeah, it's really bad. It's so it's dumb. horrible." You, you know, you know what the <laughs> what, what, what team movie I like. What I actually enjoyed was the uh, Mystery Man. I oh, yeah, Mystery that was good. Man. That, that was, was good. good. Yeah, that was a funny one. My favorite scene, like the other one, another, 
another shot, another shot is from Mystery Men that I love is where uh, Ben Stiller, his, his powers are about to come out. You know, he's about to rage and he's on top of the car and the, the camera's on his face and it just comes up and he's like, ah! Like that. And then he starts scratching at the hood and shit. Because <laughs> it's got this big build up, like you think he's about to do it and he just starts scratching. Oh, it's great, dude. It's fucking brilliant, dude. Like, it, that's, it, a good, that's a good movie. Yeah, that, that's an underrated one. That'll be my pick. Mystery <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's a good one. That was, I'm, You're yeah. an all star. Get your game on. All right. <laughs> Time to go. Thanks, everybody, for. For hanging yeah, in with yeah. us looks like there's two of you left do us a favor <laughs> click that like button help us out all two of you both of you both <laughs> one, of one of them's one of one of them's iggy who passed out like this <laughs> 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 so iggy when you wake up we love you buddy dude make us some money out there too <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen thank you for always watching us have some love some peace and that Popeye's grease. We out, dude. Peace. Later, everybody. Late.